What's up guys? Welcome to Draw School episode 9. In this episode, I'm going to show you guys how to draw hands. Now, this episode ran a little long because there's a lot of moving parts to the hand. So, uh, sorry about that ahead of time. Also, I wanted to ask you guys, if you would like, I could give critiques on this channel where you guys send me your artwork and then we can go through and I can show you ways of how to make it better. So go ahead and send me your artwork, guys. I wanna see what you've been working on. If you've been using the previous videos to get better, send your artwork to contactdrawschool at gmail.com and I will make some videos with your artwork in it. Cool, so let's get into this video now. Run my intro. So hands are one of the hardest things to draw. And what I do is I start with the base, like a square or a rectangle. And then I add the thumb pad. So this hand is palm up of your right hand facing up thumb pad, right? So it's like a little oval here, put your thumb pad. And then draw the joint there. If you guys saw the last episode on how to draw arms, then we have the cylinder attached to the joint for the thumb, another joint and top of the thumb. Cool. And the thumb is unique to all the other fingers because of the thumb pad and how it can move around. And it makes it so that you guys can grab things and hold on to things. And you know, thumb is really useful. And the thumb also only has two sections, this and this, whereas the fingers have three sections. Next, I figure out where the fingers go. So you have the palm, you have the thumb sketched out, and then you figure out where the fingers go. Now the fingers are about the same length as the palm area. And then you draw a little swoosh like this. So you can put in your fingers. Now this is your pointing finger. It starts here, go up. Now like I said, these have three sections. So you actually have the joint here, up here, and tip of the finger up here. So there's one, two, three sections. Your middle finger is your tallest finger, right? Followed by your ring finger. And then the pinky, which usually goes to like right there. So that's the thing that we have to remember always is there's three parts to the fingers, two parts to the thumb. Well, now that I've figured out the proportions of the finger, by figuring out the different joints, follow the swoosh, and it's time to add the cylinders. Then you add the cylinder here, joint, cylinder here, joint, cylinder to the top, the finger digit. And there's a little skin that attaches. Fingers here, cylinder here, up, joint, cylinder up to the next joint, and finger top connected. Same for this one, just a little bit bigger. And then there are some wrinkles here. I usually put that one in there and that's usually it. And there's wrinkles that come from this crease here. That's the thumb pad, that's why we draw that. So let's review. We have the palm here and you draw the thumb pad. You do your two sections of your thumb with the joint here because how we talked about in the arms, it's easier to imagine the joint there because then you can move it at the joint and you can imagine how it moves. So that would be the thumb and fingers move differently than the thumb. So you can't really move them from each joint in different directions like you can the thumb, but you can move them from here a good amount. So they can go side to side like that, your hands stretch like that. You know, they probably can't do that. But, but you could probably go like around there. That is the hand. I know that there are so many different ways that you can draw a hand in different directions and that's why it's good that we have hands that we can use as reference. So let's move on to the next tip of drawing hands. Actually, let's look at each individual finger. So the finger, it's three bones inside your finger that look kind of like this. 
Now, why is this important? It's important because you always have to draw your finger in these three sections so your finger can move correctly or so that it looks correct. So from there, you can move your fingers like this. Put it here, you can move your finger like that. At the joint forward, you can move your finger at this joint. So I'm just saying that once you know that it's three different sections in your finger, it makes it super easy to pose your fingers. For example, Another thing that I like to do when drawing hands is imagine them as planes, as, as rectangles in 3D. So if I were to draw the hand, let's say we're drawing the left hand face down with fingers going that way, right? I would draw a rectangle like this, make it 3D. Your palm is thicker around the base of it. So it would get thinner going that way. All right, so from this angle, your knuckles will be here, 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 and here. Technically, your thumb pad would be underneath, but it would be here. So I would put the first joint there, and moving into space, perspective. Talked about that a little bit in one of my first videos. The other joint here, and then the tip there. You should always use reference, but in this channel, I'm trying to teach you guys how to draw things kind of without reference, even though you should always have reference on the side so you can make sure you're doing the right things. And if you're drawing a character of your own, which is what this channel is all about, learning how to draw your own characters based on reference, then uh, yeah, you should always have reference is what I'm trying to get at. So that's the thumb. And if I had reference, I'm sure this would look a lot better than what it does right now. And then these fingers have three sections. Going into space, so it's getting foreshortened. One space, two space, fingertip, one space, two space, fingertip, one space, two space, fingertip, one space, two space, fingertip. And you always have to remember which fingers are longer than which. So obviously the pinky is the shortest finger, the middle finger is always the tallest finger. And then I think these two on certain people, like the ring and the pointer finger, it, it depends on which one is taller on different people. Sometimes the pointing finger on some people is almost the same length as the middle finger. On my hand, it's it goes middle fingers the longest, then the ring finger, then the pointing finger, and then the pinky. Go ahead and look at your hand to see what it's like, but it, I'm sure it's different on everybody's hand. So we have knuckles. And sometimes you see lines like this in your hands. Those aren't bones, those are tendons that help to open your hand. So like they kind of like pull back here. A muscle pulls on them back here and opens your hand. So we have the joint, the cylinder to help us imagine. Now explaining hands is tough because they're not the easiest thing to draw. So please leave me some comments. Let me know if I'm explaining this correctly. If you need some help, uh, reach out to me and I will try to help you. So you see, I'm not using a reference, but because I know how things are built, I can create a hand just from my imagination, which is kind of cool. It's kind of cool to be able to do that. If you're ever in a pinch and don't have a reference and you're just drawing your sketchbook and you just want to make a hand. And as long as you know these proportions and and you know where the joints are and how things move, then you can draw a hand. Next thing I would say, let's draw a hand from the back. So same thing, I'll draw a square. Now this is your right hand, palm down. I'll put the knuckles in. Now the thumb pad, you can't see right now because it is underneath. This is the back of the hand, but it would still be here. So it's always good to draw it. Tall, taller, a little bit shorter, shortest. Cylinder on the joint, up and down. A little bit of webbing up to the joint here. A little bit of webbing, cylinder here, down. Okay guys, so at this point, I just drew the cylinders up to the joints, your finger joints, your knuckles, your, the middle knuckle, I guess, because you have your main knuckles, and then you have your, your other little knuckle here. So at this point, I've drawn the cylinders up to that little knuckle and I've added the webbing down here that connects each finger with a little bit of skin. And then I'm going to do the cylinders up to the other joint and then the fingertips. And then usually you can see the tendons attached here, but you don't really draw these in guys. 
I wouldn't draw those in. I would just use shading, light and shadow to pop those out. So that is a hand from the back. So now that we know the main parts of a hand, the joints, how to build the cylinders, let's pose a hand. I'm not gonna use a reference. Let's just use what we've learned and pose a hand. I am going to do, let's do the peace sign. Let's, let's do the peace sign, guys, why not? Peace sign with the palm facing us on a right, which means the thumb's gonna be on this side. So I would do a palm square. And then do we wanna do the thumb coming across to the other fingers or uh, I guess, yeah, let's, let's, that's, that is the peace sign. Tuck the thumb kind of sitting on top of your ring and your pinky finger. So it would come this way, but I would figure out me personally, I would figure out the other fingers first. So there's the palm, right? And then we're gonna do something like this, kind of. So I, sometimes I just sketch it in like that. And the other two fingers are gonna go down like this. For each hand, I go, I think about the best way to, to draw that hand or how it would make it easier for me to draw this hand in this pose, right? So again, I'm not looking at reference right now. I'm just drawing a peace sign and I know it looks like that. You got your middle finger like this. You got your pointing finger up here. And then these two fingers are folded up and then your thumb is gonna sit like this. Finger attaches here, finger attaches here at the joint. You go up, there's another joint. You go up, there's another joint and then fingertip, fingertip. And then these ones are folding. So they're kind of going they're here, but they kind of go up a little bit in perspective. And then they're coming back down. So there's one, two, see, one, two. And the third one is kind of like that because it's tucking into itself. And you'll, you'll see why I did that there. And the thumb is move. Thumb will start here. It has one section, two sections for the tip of the thumb. Now that looks wild, but that's how I would do it. <laughs> Let me continue. Okay, so then what I would do is I would imagine the webbing here because there's definitely gonna be webbing when you spread your fingers out like that. I would add the cylinders up, add the cylinders up to the joint. First joint to the next joint and then the fingertips. So that's those two fingers. Let's do the folding fingers. So they are going up. They're starting at the knuckle and going up. So this is technically the joint here. So I would draw the cylinder, this, down to this joint, and then the fingertip is tucked into there. So it's in perspective like so. This finger is longer than the pinky, remember. You have the cylinder to this joint, and then the fingertip is tucked into the hand like that. I'm not looking at reference. I, I'm a little bit looking at my own hand just to make sure I'm explaining it correct. These are the steps I would take to draw the hand like this. So now we have our fingers. Now this one should taper more into smaller and smaller as it goes up. Your fingers are thicker at the base than they are at the fingertips. The thumb comes out a bit, and this is the joint with the thumb pad. And I draw through, I draw through everything to figure out how to draw things. The thumb only has two sections, and then the thumb, the top of the thumb would go like that. And this would be the thumb pad right here, that, and then that wrinkle that I like to put, that if you look, if I look at my hand, there's, but there's a lot of wrinkles coming here because there's a lot of squishing going on there. So there's kind of like a little bulge going on out here, just from how the muscles are moving from this position. And there you go, posing your own hands without looking at reference, kind of, because we always have our hands to look at. Now what's left? I mean, you can basically pose any hand by doing these things and I kind of want to show you more but I don't know if I need to go on it's really that simple not simple but really that simple you guys just have to take the time to draw your hands as you do with everything else so as you're thinking about what you're drawing and stuff just think about how things 
are the basic shapes for everything. So if I'm working on the head, I'm thinking about the head and the proportions. If I'm drawing the neck, I'm thinking about how it's attached to the head and back down to the body. Same thing for the fingers, how they're attached to the hand, how they're attached to the palm. Oh, this part is longer than this part. This part shorter than this part. It, it's supposed to fold here. It bends here. Oh, because it's moving like that. There's a wrinkle there, you know. You guys just gotta always be thinking when you're drawing and your drawings will be A plus. I'm just gonna grab some reference and draw a hand out and I'll talk to you at the end of the video. Actually, I'm gonna talk through this one. I'm gonna talk through this one until I get to the shading. Let's draw this hand. All right, so obviously I am going to start with my palm. I'm seeing it like this, I'm looking at the reference, he's flexing it, so it's not a perfect square anymore. It's more like a sushi thing here. Line, curving line right here, then it kind of curves like that there. If I curve it all the way to the bottom and treat the thumb pad as its own thing, curve it like that come down to the wrist here and then the wrist attaches there right so there goes our palm next let's figure out the thumb pad and what it's doing so the thumb pad is going like this going up towards the knuckle here it's attaching with the webbing like that and it's coming down like this can you guys see that right here then you have your fingers big thumb knuckle here is going up like this to here and then the fingertip is going up like that and this finger is going up like this there's the first joint there's the second joint and this finger is going this way like that this finger is going up on the first joint and then the second joint is kind of coming towards us so it's like a first uh perspective trick so it looks like curving it's gonna look like it's curving well, really what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna draw this here and in the other knuckle without drawing the line because you'll see why when i get to that all right and this one is also curving so we're just gonna draw it's attached here and then the other knuckles here and then the fingertip is here cool so that's how i broke down i broke down the wire frame of the hand right so let's figure out the fingers i'm adding the skin now this side is always more straight than this side this side the inside has the puffy like skin because it's flexing so it's more rounded lines on the inside of the so that's a good tip that i didn't think about so the top of the finger is always going to be straight lines the bottom of the finger is gonna be rounded lines like that. Haha! -ha. See guys, I just I'm learning too. I'm learning how to teach you better. And then this finger up. I think I'm gonna have to add more girth to this part right here based on what I'm drawing over there. But we'll fix that too. We can always fix things after the fact. Alright, so then I'm gonna attach this finger here to the joint, which is here. It's going like this to the last webbing we can see there. And this is where it's tricky because it's doing the foreshortening thing at the top of the finger like this. Then it's coming out at us, forming the fingertip right here and attaching back here again. So when you're foreshortening fingertips, it's always good to look at reference. And the thing that will help give your drawing the look of for shortening is how you draw the nail. So you see how it's curving like this around the finger, back to the cuti cuticle. That helps to sell that for sure shortening. Now I do see a little like bulge here. And this one is attached like this, going this way. It's rounded, it's foreshortened again. So I see it, the third knuckle is actually here. So it's going like that and down. Knuckle, knuckle, down. So there's the pinky. And like I said, I thought I was gonna have to add more and I definitely did because it's coming like here and then down like that. Oh, there are the fingers. You guys let me know if this looks good, if it's making sense. The thumb, the funnest part to draw in my opinion. So I'm also looking at this negative space here, right? And I'm looking at mine. I want 
want that shape. So that lines like that, it's attached like that. And then it goes, and draw this knuckle over here, which is pretty prominent. Sticks out a good amount, and it goes down like this. And then, the rounding off of this joint, or thumb knuckle, and it goes up to the fingertip like so. See these straight lines, guys? Straight, straight, straight. Now watch how it's gonna get round, round too because of the fattiness of the bottom of your fingers and there is the hand a little bit more stylized than the actual picture but you know it works it works stylized is good sometimes and now i'll just finish this off with some shading guys and i'll talk to you at the end That was a lot, I know. I'm sorry about that, guys, but hands are complicated. Luckily, we have hands that we can use as reference on an everyday basis, right? Cool. So as always, at the end of the month, I will be giving away an ELO sketchbook to one of you lucky subscribers who like and comment on the videos, you know? Also, guys, if you want to send your artwork to my email, contactdrawschool at gmail.com, I will make a video critiquing your artwork and helping you to make it better, okay? Next episode will be a very special episode unlike the other episodes that I have made so far. So stay tuned and I will see you guys on the next one.